Okay, making decisions in your code, conditionals. In any programming language, the code needs to make decisions and carry out actions accordingly, depending on different inputs. For example, in a game, if the player's number of lives is zero, then the game is over. In a weather app, if it's being looked at in the morning, show a sunrise graphic, show stars and a moon if it's nighttime. This article will explore how so-called conditional statements work in JavaScript. You can have it on one condition. Humans and other animals make decisions all the time that affect their lives, from small, should I eat a cookie or two, to large, should I stay in my home country and work on my father's farm, or should I move to America and study astrophysics? Conditional statements allow us to represent such decision-making in JavaScript. From the choice that must be made, one cookie or two, to the resulting outcome of those choices, perhaps the outcome of eight one cookie, might be still felt hungry, and the outcome of ate two cookies might be felt full up, but mom scolded me for eating all the cookies. If-else statements. Let's look at by far the most common type of conditional statement you'll use in JavaScript, the humble if-else statement. Basic if-else syntax. Basic if-else syntax looks like so in pseudocode. So if a condition is true, It'll run this, and if it's not, then it'll run this under the else section of code. Here's what we got. The keyword if is followed by some parentheses. A condition to test placed inside the parentheses typically is this value bigger than this other value or does this value exist? This condition will make use of the comparison operators we discussed in the last module and will return true or false. A set of curly braces inside which we have some code. This can be any code we like and will only be run if the condition returns true. The keyword else. Another set of curly braces inside which we have some more code. This can be any code we like and will only be run if the condition is not true. This code is pretty human readable. It is saying if the condition returns true, run code A, else run code B. You should note that you don't have to include the else in the second curly brace block. The following is also perfectly legal code. So if condition is true, it'll run this code. And if not, it'll just skip this whole block and run this code. However, you need to be careful here. In this case, the second block of code is not controlled by the conditional statement. So it will always run, regardless of whether the condition returns true or false. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but it might not be what you want. Often you'll run, want to run one block of code or the other, not both. As a final point, you may sometimes see if else statements written out without the curly braces in the following what? shorthand style. I'm sorry. If I wasn't condition really watched a movie, so I didn't really. <laughs> Somebody saying something? Um, if condition is true, code to run. If condition is true, else run some other code instead. I've never seen that written out like that. That's new to me. <laughs> this is perfectly valid code, but it, it but using it is not recommended. It is much easier to read the code and work well, out what is. Wait, if uh, the uh, code that looks to be the code is just one line, you need right. to read the code just one line. Yeah, that makes sense, but I, I don't know. I think the other <laughs> syntax is just easier to read if you got the brackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I then use the you know, when I'm just lazy too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so it is much easier to read the code and work out what's going on if you use curly braces to delimit the blocks of code and use multiple lines and in indentation. A real example. To understand this syntax better, let's consider a real example. Imagine a child being asked for help with a chore by their mother or father. A parent might say, hey, sweetheart, if you help me by going and doing the shopping, I'll give you some extra allowance so you can afford that toy you wanted. In JavaScript, we can represent this like so. So variable shopping done equals false. If shopping done equals true, child's allowance is 10. Otherwise, child's allowance is five. This code, as shown, will always result in sh the shopping done variable returning false, meaning disappointment for our poor child. 
it would it'd be up to us to provide a mechanism for the parent to set the shopping done variable to true that the child did the shopping. Else if. The last example provided us with two choices or outcomes, but what if we want more than two? There's a way to chain on extra choices to your if else statements using else if. Each extra choice requires an additional block to put between if and curly bracket code and else. Check out the following more involved example, which could be part of a simple weather forecast application. So choice is select value, select is the query selector for select. So, okay, it's down here. So you get to check whether it's, what the weather's like. And then down here you have your if else statements and else if statements. So if choice is sunny, the text will say, it's nice and sunny outside today, wear shorts, go to the beach or the park and get an ice cream. If it's rainy, rain is falling outside, take a raincoat and a brawly. Don't stay out for too long. Snowing, the snow is coming down, it is freezing, best to stay in with a cup of hot chocolate or go build a snowman. And if it's overcast, it isn't raining, but the sky is gray and gloomy, you could turn any minute, so take a raincoat just in case. And if it isn't any of those, it'll run this where the text content will be nothing. So if we make it sunny, you'll see the text pop up here, which is this right here, this line. And then same thing with rainy, snowing, and overcast. But if it's make a choice, you won't see anything because this text or this code is running right here. Here we got an HTML select element allowing us to make different weather choices in a simple paragraph. In JavaScript, we are storing a reference to both the select and P elements and adding an event listener to the select element so that when its value is changed, the set weather function is run. And this is the set weather. When the function is run, we set a variable called choice to the current value selected in the select element. When we then use a conditional statement to show different text inside the paragraph, depending on what the value of choice is. Now how all the conditions are tested in the NF or in else if blocks except for the first one, which is tested in an if block. The very last choice inside the else block is basically a last resort option. The code inside it will be run if none of the conditions are true. In this case, it serves to empty out, to empty the text out of the paragraph if nothing is selected. For example, a user decides to reselect to make a choice placeholder option shown at the beginning. A note on comparison operators. Comparison operators are used to test the conditions inside our conditional statements. We first looked at comparison operators back in basic math and JavaScript numbers and operators article. Our choices are strict equals, strict inequality, um, which tests if one value is identical to or not identical to another, greater than or less than, and greater than or less than and equal to and greater than and equal to. Um, Review the material at the previous link if you want to refresh your memories on these. We want to make a special mention of testing Boolean true-false values and a common pattern you'll come across again and again. Any value that is not false, undefined, null, zero, or not a number, or an empty string actually returns true when tested as a conditional statement. Therefore, you can simply use a variable name on its own to test whether it's true and even that or even that it exists, i.e. it's not undefined, because undefined will return false. So for example, variable cheese equals cheddar, if cheese, console log yay, cheese available for making cheese on toast, or else console log no cheese on toast for you today. So this will return true because there is a variable that's assigned. Cheddar. One is in the console, so that's for like, you get yeah. Yeah, I'll do it like I did yesterday. No, not that. Why aren't you going to have the screen? There we go. Let's console.
Paste that in. And as you can see, it says, yay, cheese available for making cheese on toast. So values, are, what is value? Like false, undefined, more, zero, not the number, and interesting. They're all called falsely values, but they yeah. don't false. These are the only falsy values they are, or an empty string. Everything else will return true. Yep. Minus or anyway. Um, and returning our pre to our previous example about the child doing a chore for their parent, you could write it like this. If shopping done is false, if shopping done, uh, you don't need to explicitly specify true. Child allowance 10, else child allowance is five. So if you copy this over, and then console.log, child's allowance, you'll see it's five because shopping done is false, so it runs the else code. Nesting if, if else, it is perfectly okay to put one if else statement inside another one to nest them. For example, we could update our weather forecast application to show a further set of choices depending on what the temperature is. So if the temperature choice is sunny, and if the temperature is less than 86, it'll say it is this many degrees outside, nice and sunny. Let's go to the beach or get an ice cream. If it's sunny and the temperature is greater than 86, it is blank outside, really hot. If you wanna go outside, make sure to put some sun cream on. Even though the code works all together, each if else statement works completely independently of the other one. Logical operators, and, or, or not. If you want to test multiple conditions without writing nested if-else statements, logical operators can help you. When using conditions, the first two do the following, and, allows you to chain together two or more expressions so that all of them have to individually evaluate to true for the whole expression to return true, or allows you to chain together two or more expressions so that one or more of them have to individually evaluate to true for the whole expression to return true. To give you an example, the previous snippet could be written like this. So if choice is sunny and the temperature is less than this, else if choice is sunny and the temperature is greater than this. So for example, the first code block will only be run if choice is sunny and the temperature is less than 86, return true. Let's look at a quick or example. If ice cream van outside or house status equals on fire, console log, you should leave the house quickly. Else, probably should just stay in. So if one of these is true, then the first one will run. They don't both have to be true if you use this or operator right here. Um, which is kind of crazy because on a side note, uh, my neighbor two doors down, his house was on fire this morning. There was like five fire trucks down there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty well. He had electrical fire in his roof. Yeah. Oh. I'm in my class, so. Uh, the last type of logical operator not is expressed by an exclamation point. Or the exclamation operator, I guess you could say. Can be used to negate an expression. Let's combine it with the or example above. So... This means it flips whatever's inside it over. So this is true or this is true, it'll flip it if this is false or this it's is false. The sign is false bang in JavaScript. It's, do what? Bang? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's the bang, the bang operator. In this snippet, if the or statement returns true, the not operator will negate it so that the overall expression returns false. You can combine as many logical statements together as you want in whatever structure. The following example executes the code inside only if both or statements return true, meaning that the overall and statement will return true. So they got this in parentheses. So if either of these are true, this whole parenthesis you can just think of as true. And if either of these are true, this whole statement. Uh, one, one on each side of the two code, like the, um, yeah. for the code for the code block in um, each one. 
Yeah. So when you have an or, all it requires is one thing in there to be true. And then the whole uh, block will be true or statement in the parentheses. A common mistake when using logical or operator or conditional, wait, a common mistake when using the logical or operator in conditional statements is to try to state the variable whose value you are checking once and then give a list of values it could be to return true separated by or operators. For example, x equals 5 or 7 or 10 or 20. In this case, the conditional inside if will always evaluate to true since 7 or any other non-zero value will always evaluate to true. This condition is actually saying if x equals 5 or 7 is true, which it always is. This is logically not what we want. To make this work, you got to specify a complete test either side of the operator, or either side of each or operator. So you can't do x equals 5 or 7 or 10 or 20. You actually do x equals 5 or oh. x equals 7 or x equals 10 or x equals 20. Uh, like aluminum foil and stuff like that, but I don't remember everything right now. Um, switch statements. If else statements do the job of enabling conditional code well, but they are not without their downsides. They are mainly good for cases where you get a couple of choices. <laughs> one, uh, Rashad, can you uh, mute your mic for a sec? Hey guys, do me a favor if you're not talking, go ahead and mute your mics. I'll, uh, I'll meet you guys for yourselves. Appreciate it. If else statements do the job of enabling conditional code well, but they are not without their downsides. They are mainly good for cases where you got a couple of choices and each one requires a reasonable amount of code to be run and or the conditions are complex, multiple logical operators. For cases where you just want to set a variable to be a certain choice of value and print out a particular statement depending on a condition, the syntax can be a bit cumbersome, especially if you're given a large amount of choices. Switch statements are your friend here. They can take a single expression value as input then look through a number of choices until they find one that matches the value, executing the corresponding code that goes along with it. Here's some more pseudocode to give you an idea. So switch, you put your expression in here, uh, case, and then your first choice, your second choice, and then under there you put run this code and then break to break out of the uh, switch statement. And then you could also have a default where if it doesn't equal any of those, it just runs. Here we got the keyword switch followed by a set of parentheses, an expression or value inside the parentheses. The keyword case followed by a choice that the expression value could be followed by a colon. Some code to run if the choice matches the expression. A break statement followed by a semicolon if the previous choice matches the expression value the browser stops edit executing the code block here and moves on to the code, moves on to any code that appears below the switch statement. As in many other cases, bullets three to four as you like, the keyword default fo followed by the exactly the same code pattern as one of the cases, except that the default does not have a choice after it, and you do not need to break statement as there is nothing to run after this in the block anyways. This is the default option that runs if none of the other choices match. You don't have to include the default section. You can safely omit it if there is no chance that the expression could end up equaling an unknown value. There is a chance of this, however, you need to include it to handle unknown cases. So here's an example of a switch case. So this is the same weather forecast application we saw earlier, but it's using switch. So you have switch, and then your expression here, which is choice, which are gonna be one of these. You have case, and then what your choices are, and then you got a colon, and then you got your code that you wanna run. Notice you don't have to put these in brackets or anything, but they do tab it over for formatting. And then after that, you gotta have a break or else it'll go on to the next, um, the next code. So it works the same way as the last one did. And then you got the default down here, which sets it to an empty paragraph.
Um, ternary operator. This is one final bit of syntax we want to, want, you, want to introduce you to before we get you to play with some examples. The ternary or conditional operator is a small bit of syntax that tests a condition and returns one value expression if it's true and another if it's false. This, this can be useful in some situations and take up a lot less code than an if else block. If you simply have two choices, that are chosen between true false condition the pseudocode looks like this so you have a condition a question mark you run this code if it's true the code that's on the left side of the colon and then it'll run or it'll run this code if it's on the right side of the colon so for the example is birthday true if it is true it'll say this Happy birthday, Mrs. Smith. We hope you have a, great, a good day. If it isn't, if birthday is false, then it'll run this. Good morning, Mrs. Smith. Here we have a variable called is birthday. If it is true, we give our guest happy birthday message. If not, we give her the standard daily greeting. Ternary operator example. You don't just have to set variable values with the ternary operator. You can also run functions or lines of code, anything you like. The following live example shows a simple theme cho chooser where the styling for the site is applied using a ternary operator. So here's the ternary operator. So if the value is black, it'll update black white for, um, I guess, let's see. Oh, it'll run this function right here update with the arguments black white for these which will update the background color and the color of the text but if value black is false then it'll run the function with these arguments for white for the background color and black for the text so if you select theme to black you'll see it switches here and then it switches back here we got a select element to choose a theme, black or white, plus a simple H1 to display a website title. We also have a function called update, which takes two colors as parameters. The website's background color is set to the first provided color, and its text color is set to the second provided color. Finally, we also got an on change event listener that serves to run a function containing a ternary operator. It starts with a test condition, select value equals black. This returns true, we run the update function with the parameters of black and white meaning that we end up with background color of black and text color of white. If it returns false, we run the update function with parameters of white and black, meaning the site colors are inverted. Active learning, a simple calendar. In this example, you're going to help us finish a simple calendar application. In the code, you got a select element to allow the user to choose between different months, an on-change event handler, handler to detect when the value in the select menu is changed, a function called create calendar that draws the calendar and displays the correct month in the H1 element. We need you to write a conditional statement inside the onChange handler function, just below the add conditional here comment. It should look at the selected month stored in the choice variable. This will be the select element value after the value changes, so January for example. Set the variable called days to be equal to the number of days in the selected month. To do this, you'll have to look up the number of days in each month of the year. You can ignore leap years for the purposes of this example. You're advised to use logical or, use logical or to group multiple months together into a single condition. Many of them share the same number of days. Think about which number of days is most common and use that as a default value. If you make a mistake, you can always reset the example with the reset button if you get really stuck press show solution to see a solution so here's the code I'm actually going to duplicate this tab so we can work on the code while reading the instructions so here's where they want the conditional so it says we need you to write a conditional statement inside the on change handler function Look at the selected month stored in the choice variable. This will be the select element after the value changes, so January, for example. So 
they want an if else statement, right? Or do they want switch? No, it doesn't really say. Oh, well, we'll just do if else because they want the or in there. So if this is your conditional and this is your block. So if select that value equals January or select dot value equals it's probably be easier with the switch statement. March. What else has 31 days? Select that value equals. Um, March, April, May. Or select equals July. Select that value equals August or select equals October. Select that value equals December. That's all of them. Set a variable called days to be equal to the number of days in the selected month. To do this, you will have to look up the number of days in each month of the year. Da, da, da. So, var days equals 31. And then let's put some space in here. You have to do an else if for February. So select dot value equals February. var days equals 28 and then oops then you can just do an else to take care of the rest of the months var days equals 30 So it should work. It's not working. Where did I mess something up? So this is my conditionals. Car days equals 31. Joseph, aha. Missing a parentheses right there. See if that helps. There we go. Seems to be running now. So January 31, February 28th. March 31, April 30, May 31, June 30, July 31, August 31, September 30, October 31, November 30, and December 31. So that code works and is functional. Although it's not the way I would have done it. I would have you just used a switch.
like they used earlier. Does anybody have questions about that one? Or are they stuck on it? I'm trying to understand the question. So, um, this, yeah, too fast. Yeah, Sorry, DK, you're saying you didn't understand the question? Yeah, I'm still trying to understand the question because I, I can't like both of you when I yeah, so the question is basically asking for you to set select value okay. or select value is going to be whatever you enter up here. So January, February, March, one of these months. Okay. So basically what you want to do for each month is have a variable named days equal to the number of days in that month. Yeah, grade B for each month. Hello? Yeah, what were you asking? You did it for each month. Yeah, you got to have a conditional for each month. So here you see. How long is the code? Let me see. Yeah, so like here I did or statements for oh, every okay, month that had 31 you. days. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I understand. Let me just let me run through. All right, I'll let you catch up. We got 93 stars, man. We need, we need seven more. <laughs> Get in there. Something happened when you get uh, 100 stars. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm able to, uh, I'm able to uh, sign up for Open Collective. Yeah. Um. John, what was the start thing you were talking about? I didn't really uh, get to. I didn't even understand what you were talking about on uh, Discord. Yeah, dude, if you haven't given me a star on GitHub, go give me a star, please. And the money that I'm, uh, that I'm working for right now with this project, what I'll do is I'll be able to donate it to the How group. do I go about How do I go about it? All right, go to github.com forward slash w3develops forward slash w3develops. So it takes you to our repository, and then just click on the star button. Okay, okay. all right, I'll do that. I, I should make a video on that. <laughs> <laughs> but just go, 
to make it easier for people because most of the people don't understand it. They might not say it, but I didn't get what you were talking about when you said it. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah. For them, yeah. Yeah, that. just go here and then uh, it should be a place where you can start. Uh, click on W3 bubbles. No, oh, it's this one. Yeah, or you could just click on the star right here to start. Oh, did that do it too? Yeah. See, I've already starred you. Thank you very much. Very, very, very much. One of one of the few, man. One of the one of the, one of the chosen few. <laughs> one of, one of, you know, got that head start, man. Just can't wait, man. See, I'm what I'm gonna do is I might just make a video on the first hundred people to literally give us a star. There you go. Yeah, man. Because it means a lot, dude. It means a, a big ton. Means more than people know. It lets us like it lets us join the open. Let, it, it, it helps us become recognized as, as as open source. Right. Game changer. All right, DK, were you able to catch up? You still working on it? Yeah, I'm almost done. I just want to like get sort everything out. I yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to sort it out. Just give me some minutes. I should be done. Yeah, no worries, man. I'm not. I'm not rushing you, man. Just let us know if you need help. All right. Thank you. Uh, yo, Rashad, are you there? Hmm? No, I'm talking to Rashad. I'm wondering if he's uh, if he's if he's still in the stream. Yeah, I'm still here. All right. Hey, uh, after Pat, uh, after this page right here, would you go ahead and uh, uh, switch out for Pat? Because what we're doing is we're we're recording these and we're putting them on uh, YouTube for our progress. And also, it's uh, it's going to help other people who uh, who aren't able to be here. Um, and also, it's going to be very very helpful for other cohorts. I mean, other learning groups, and also we're the first person, people in the world, to actually record ourselves going through these. So it'd be very beneficial to the world, man. Yeah, definitely, no problem. Thank you very much, dude. Um, so after you get done with this, uh, you guys, you guys can like switch out. You know, one does one page, the next one does the next page. You know, that's how we usually do it. I appreciate that, dude. You know, teamwork. Yeah, no problem. That sounds good to me. <laughs> All right, let me get myself. Let's back at it. I'm wondering if there's an easier way to send these invites out. Because right now I'm not the same like any set of invites. Like three clips, four invites. Five, six clips. Depending on what clips. I wonder if I could just like copy and paste their name like one place and click it for you.
It's like, you know, walking. Let me, share me, share my screen. Maybe you can help me to plug it. Yeah? All right, good. Yeah. Um, can you, can you show? Okay, you can see the, let me expand it. Better. Can you look through? So, um, yeah, I, I did select value for each one, but I guess choice works too, since they set it to a variable. Um, your September should be, yeah, your September's right. Let's see, July, August. Yeah, it looks like it works. You test it out. What? Okay, okay, okay. I don't know if it worked before. Maybe because I, um, I didn't refresh then. Something. What? Yep, looks like you got it working. Yeah, okay. Let me stop sharing this. Or should I read, read, read the next? Uh, or you want to go ahead Yeah, if you, I mean, if you want to take the lead on that one, you could do it. Okay, that's um, Active learning, more color choices. <laughs> In this example, you are going to take the scenario operator example we saw earlier and convert the scenario operator into a switch statement. But we will also, that will allow us to apply more choices to a simple website. Look at the select, <laughs> try to select this time, you will see that the, it has, does not, uh, it has not two theme options, but five. You need to add a switch statement just underneath the uh, backslash backslash add switch statement comment. It should have, it should accept the choice variable as its input expression. For each case, the choice should be, should equal one of the possible values that can be selected: white, black, purple, yellow, or psychedelic. Note that the values are sensitive and it should, it should and should equal the option element value value element value value rather than the visual labels for for each case the update function should be should be run and the past two color values the first one of the first one for the background color and the second one for the text color remember that the value remember that color values are strings so Need to be wrapped in quotes. If you make if you make a mistake, you can always reset the example, the reset button. If you get really stuck, press show solution to see the solution. So let's so, see. It's not working at the moment. So I need to work on that. Now, is this switch taking this time? 
Taking choice as a parameter. Yes. I think it's the first case should be black. If you put it in white, the first color. When choice is right. So each change is equal to the possible value that can be selected. What can be what can be values are preset to us? Before the option value. For each case, the update function should be run, and the first two color values for first first one, the background color, and second one. The second one for the text color. Remember the colors, the color values are still. So we need to wrap the so need to wrap the text. So within the case, we're going to call the update function. Um, Pat, are we changing the background, uh, the, 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 the text color also? Yeah, I Pat. think you're changing both. I think the, the background color needs to be the choice, and then the text can be whatever. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Don't forget to break the um, the first case. Yeah. Yeah. And when the next case should be. Uh, You're talking right now? I can't really hear you. I'm just trying to move the site of this one. Okay. Oh, okay, my bad. My bad. Black, purple, yellow. Next one is uh, black. So passing.
mean, in this case, it's uh, Jelly. So in the last case, the testing for you can set this to default if anything needs to be followed in this case. I say to the word choice, so it's one first right, black, open. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to still get mine to work too. Since this is the reason I obeyed everything for each case. So. The first letters in the colors aren't capitalized. Oh, everything right. should be lowercase. Oh. I wonder why that is. It doesn't match <laughs> with the option. Text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when like the code that I guess this little text box is linked to, all the colors are uh, lowercase, so it doesn't match it correctly. I was trying to figure out what you were doing wrong, and I had to really peer through line by line. <laughs> what I was trying to be the um, the instruction set by set in the question. That was why I had to like follow the open. Oh. 
Eu não vou. Não tem isso. Não CSS is not easy, so like the color capitalization shouldn't really be the problem. I think there's another issue with my code. Okay. okay. Oh, 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 I think it's... Oh, shit. Pal, um, what do you think is the, is the problem with my code? I don't need to see anything actually. I'm having the same problem. Mine's still not working either. Oh. Um, and as I said, the choice is the choice is the All right, I found my problem. Yeah. I was missing a quote mark. Um, oh. Let me look at yours. Hold on, is your purple? Are yeah. they? Is it closed with double brackets or? Hey, it's one. It's too small on my screen. I can't tell because it looks like the first is a a double tick quotation mark, and then the last one is a single tick. Oh, should I use the same um, quotation mark? Because I just put out it. You just have to use it for the same uh, for like each string. You have to use the same one. Yeah, double check your quotes and your. Uh... Like, I mean, you shouldn't have to use double quotes. Yeah, um, you should be able to use single, but as long as, uh, like, everything matches. Yeah, it all matches. Yeah, yeah let me try it. Yeah, maybe it should, be an, it should be an issue. Yeah, and also check your colons and, um, yeah, okay. Semicolons to make sure. Because I looked all over for mine. And finally, I got fed up, and I copied it over to a console, <laughs> and, it said it, and it said I was missing a, that invalid token. Oh, okay. I think I'll do that fast change. Um,
So we're not working. So I think <sighs> done here. <laughs> um, expected identifier. There it is right there. <laughs> okay. Hey, it looked like double quotes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you put for um the console would have seen it a call. Try switching your stuff up top again, see if it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. eh, it's still not working. You try copy and paste it again, see if there's yeah, something yeah, yeah. else throwing it off. Scroll down on that because it looks like you got more. Yeah. Um, I think there's only one. I think it's catching it one after the other. Yeah, I think you might want to change all those to make sure they're double quotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. There's no error this time, so I think. This is here. No, this one is the same as me. Oh, <laughs> oh now it's working. Now. Yep. <sighs> That's why they make the console for debugging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's always something simple like that. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, oh, like, you know, like I read something online or so, like, <laughs> you're like writing a code is like a way of just writing bugs and you have to debug bugs. So when you're writing code, you're just, you're indirectly writing bugs. <laughs> and, okay. <clears throat> Conclusion. And that's all you need, you really need to know about functional structures in JavaScript right now. I'm sure you have you would have understood this concept and walk through the example with this. If there is anything you need to understand, feel free to read through the article again. Contact us.
So we'll be moving on to uh, looping next. Yeah, um, looping, looping cool. Yeah, uh, Rashad, if you want to read um, some of this section. But uh, first, let's go ahead and take 10 Okay. Thank before you. we start this next section. All right, All right. sounds good. So, right. yep, you're going to pause the uh, record. Yeah, I'll stop the recording, then I'll start it back when we come back. Okay, all right. Sure.